Okay, we're going to take a moment here and look inside the stove just so you can see what's underneath. Okay, and you just start taking panels out. Each stove is a little different, so you'll need to find uh, the proper technique for taking your stove apart. Okay. Now we've, we've got our top off and, and there's a flap in the rear. You see it open and closed. Uh, that's my oven control. Okay. If, uh, if I've got it open, then my heat just goes across, goes straight to the rear of the stove and goes up my pipe and out. Um, if I want to use my oven, then I'll take and close the flap. It'll come across, like I said, go down the sides, uh, along the bottom and then out the rear. Well, there's two times that you'll want this open and uh, so that it can go on out. Now, when you very first light your fire, uh, you've got all smoke. You don't really have any heat, um, you know, or enough draft moving uh, for it to even think about going the long way around. So when you first light your stove, make sure that's open. Uh, that way you, it can go ahead and the, the smoke can find the easy route out until you build up to where you have more heat than you do smoke. Now, once you've got enough heat going and your fire's going good and you want to utilize your oven, then, you can close it uh, and, and utilize the oven. But if you're not using the oven at all, then just leave it open. That's the second time you want to leave it open. Reason being, as smoke and heat comes around um, your oven, bear in mind it's, it's taking ashes uh, and things along those lines around with it. So at least once a year, you need to take a moment, locate the clean outs that's on your stove and clean your ashes out. Um, so if I'm not using my oven, then I just leave it open, and then that's less ash going in around uh, my oven. Okay, you'll notice inside the firebox, uh, it's lined with fire brick, okay? They help act as, a, as an insulator so that uh, they gather heat, hold heat, and they also protect the sides from getting too hot uh, so that it doesn't warp or damage the stove. Now, when I got this stove, the fire brick on this side was just deteriorated. There wasn't much left. So I cleaned out, you know, uh, all of the damaged brick. I just laid a piece of uh, sheet metal up here as a form. Then I went by a place where they do boiler work uh, for these factories and uh, bought a partial bag off the guy for a few bucks uh, in this boiler refractory, um, which can take heat a lot higher than we'll ever get it. So, we're, you know, it's a great... A replacement item for it and you can it's just like uh, mixing up concrete uh, you just add water stir it up and then apply it just like you would concrete I let it set 48 hours before I put a fire in here and I that was two years ago and it's been working great ever since All right, one thing that we, we want to go over and and, uh, and make sure that we touch on and that uh, you fully understand the importance of it is uh, the elbows that go in your stovepipe all right on all of these, uh, whether it be a wood cook stove or a wood heater, you want to have to have uh, piping going out the back to take the smoke and the heat outside. Well, in doing so, when you route the pipe out, you use elbows um, to, uh, to route your pipe. Now, every elbow that you put in that stove pipe slows the airflow down, okay? Um, and usually it's not that big a deal, uh, but on a wood cook stove, it's... It's probably more important than it is on, on, a, on a wood heater. But if, um, if you put the pipe coming out of the back and then the elbow in it to, to turn up, then um, you've got one elbow in the pipe, your oven's gonna work just fine. A lot of the times people will try to keep as much of the stove pipe inside the, the house as possible uh, for the simple fact that you get more heat off the pipe, you know. Well, in doing that, they usually elbow out the back I let the pipe come up, you know, just before it gets to the ceiling. They'll elbow it again, then it'll go through the wall, then they'll turn, put another elbow in it, going up above the roof line. Well, then that puts three elbows in your stove pipe. Well, if you do that, you're not gonna be able to use the oven on your wood cook stove. Now, this is what I want you to think about. If, um, if you've got three elbows in that stove pipe going out, you've got very little draw or uh, draft on your, on your pipe going out. And remember what we're talking about when if you're just using the stove top 
and your smoke's going straight to the back and out, it's not that big a deal. But if you close that route off and then the smoke has to come across and do the opposite of what heat's designed to do, it has to go down. Remember, heat is designed to rise. So we're asking it to go down across the bottom to the rear, then up and out. So we're asking the smoke and the heat to go the long way around. Well, if we've got three elbows in that stovepipe, it's not going to do that. When you close off the easy route going out, then what's happening is all that smoke's going to gather up inside and going to ruin a good day. So bear in mind, whenever you put your pipe in, put as few elbows as possible. We run this stove with one elbow. It goes straight out the back through the wall, and it turns and goes up. But, uh, anyhow, we run this stove with one elbow, and, and it works great. Uh, the oven control draws good, and everything works perfect. Uh, so whenever you're putting your pipe in, the fewer elbows you can have, the better. One, no problem. Two, you can usually get by with. Three, you're not using the oven. Uh, it's going to smoke you out. Well, I hope that um, the information that, that we've got here helps you. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to email us. Uh, we've got three of these wood cook stoves and we utilize them continuously. One thing that we do that you might want to think about is it's a tradition in our home. Whenever it's somebody's birthday, uh, their birthday cake has to be cooked on the wood cook stove. And uh, it has to be cooked by an opposite family member. Like if it's my son's birthday, uh, my daughter will bake his birthday cake on the wood cook stove. So that does two things. Number one, it keeps uh, the family all in touch with how to operate the wood cook stove because as these kids go through life, they get uh, off on other things. We need to bring them back every now and then, rein them in, as you would say. So, but that, uh, that helps keep them familiar with the wood cook stove. And it also, uh, the more the wood cook stove is used, the better off it is because it's like anything else. They draw dampness and they'll rust and, and um, deteriorate, and that's the last thing we want. We want to try to preserve, preserve these because they're part of our history, and they're very functional, and it's a lot of fun.